Justice Department. How's everyone doing today? I want to thank everyone for joining us today. This afternoon, we'll be discussing how the NRA can help your club get involved in NRA Action Pistol competition. NRA Action Pistol shooting is open to all individuals who are interested in action-type courses of fire, which combines speed and accuracy with shooting at multiple targets. This webinar will give you information on how to start running these NRA Action Pistol competitions at your club. The information provided will also give you the necessary tools to start ordering equipment, how to set up your range for the courses of fire you want to run, and how to make your match an official NRA sanctioned match. Now, if you have a question at any time, feel free to type in the question box on the right-hand side of the screen. If you see that menu, there should be a box where you can type a question and we'll answer it. So feel free to type in the question at any time you want. Our presenter today is Mr. Damien Orsinger, Program Coordinator for the Pistol Department of the Competitive Shooting. Now, Damien, you want to say hi and, and talk a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thank you, son. Thank you for the introduction. Like Sun said, I'm Damien Orsinger. I'm a pistol program coordinator here in the competitive shooting division of the NRA. I'm in charge of running the National Action Pistol Championship, better known as the Bianchi Cup, uh, as well as the pistol phase uh, for the National Ch Pistol Championships and Precision Bullseye Pistol at Camp Perry every year. I also sanction all the matches across the country. Uh, I help all the clubs you know, just figure out how to get up and running, help them process their paperwork, uh, uh, verify national records, distinguish points, all, all of that good stuff. Uh, thank you all for coming on and signing on today to learn about NRA Action Pistol and how to start matches at your club. I hope that's why you're on here. Uh, I'd love to see more matches across the country, whether they're approved, registered, or regional or state championship tournaments. Uh, they're all good to me, and I, I want to help you get them started at your club. So please, by all means, feel free to ask questions. No question is a dumb question. Uh, you know, we all got to start somewhere. So I'm here to help you start matches at your club. Now, Damien, what do, you, what do you mean by approved? Um, so can a club just host this and it not be approved, or what's the difference? Well, that would actually be sanctioned. Approved, registered, Approved and registered matches are the differences in uh, what you're allowed to do in your match. So an approved match, you're allowed to get classified, and there's a fee, uh, but you're not allowed to set national records uh, or anything like that. Registered matches, you get classified, and you can set national records. The fee is slightly more. A state championship would be a registered match. A regional championship is a registered match. Uh, regional championships are more expensive because you get awards along with it. But sanctioned is the word I think you were asking about, son. A sanctioned match is, is a match in which you're running NRA Action Pistol. We recognize you. You have submitted paperwork and a program for your match, and it is therefore a sanctioned NRA match. We'll list it on our website. You'll be in Shooting Sports USA Magazine listed, uh, your club and the dates of which you're shooting. If you're not sanctioned, well, then I have no clue that you're running matches. Neither does anybody that looks at our website. So, therefore, the only people that are going to know you're running matches are people that are members of your club. Um, obviously, I want all matches to be sanctioned. Um, but if you start running matches unsanctioned at first, that's okay by me as long as you start, as long as you start running matches and, and eventually you sanction them. So. That is the difference. Sanctioned and unsanctioned just means whether or not it's an officially recognized NRA match or not. All right, thanks. So, conducting an NRA Action Pistol competition at your club, it, it is easier uh, than it's ever been before. What is NRA Action Pistol? Some of you may not know some of the history of NRA Action Pistol. It was originally started in 1970, or the, the, the idea and concept was uh, created in 1979 by John Bianchi of Bianchi International uh, Holsters and Leather, premier leather maker back in the, I guess, 60s, 70s, uh, 80s, as, long, uh, as well as a gentleman named Ray Chapman, who started the Chapman Training Academy, which is now the Green Valley Rifle and Pistol Club, which is the home of the NRA Bianchi Cup. National Action Pistol Championship. 
Uh, Ray Chapman was a law enforcement officer. I believe he was a Marine. Uh, and he was also an IPSC USPSA champion uh, of the 70s. So together, he and John Bianchi thought, you know, we need we need a pistol championship that is going to test all the skills necessary to be a top-level pistol shooter. And there's a lot of dis different disciplines out there. There's, you know, IPSC, which is kind of high speed. There is Bullseye, which is the co complete opposite, with much slower, precision-based. Uh, there's PPC, Police Pistol Combat, uh, which was kind of a slower, static version of IPSC. So anyways, they wanted to come up with something more exciting, something that challenged all the different disciplines and challenged every facet of the pistol shooting sports. So they developed the four original courses of fire that were held at the very first Yankee Cup in 1979. Uh, the, the targets are a mix of steel and paper. As of right now, there are 17 approved, approved courses of fire in the NRA Action Pistol Rulebook. We are creating new ones to hopefully be approved here in the next year or two. Um, moving on to the next page here. What clubs can run an Air Action Pistol competition? Well, any NRA affiliated club can be sanctioned to run NRA Action Pistol competitions. Any club can run NRA Action Pistol, you don't have to be affiliated, but if you want to run sanctioned matches, you do need to be affiliated. Uh, as you can see here, appropriate distances, the longest distances shot in NRA Action Pistol are 50 yards, so it's ideal that you have a, a, a pistol range that is 50 yards long. If you don't, it's not mandatory. There are other courses of fire, plenty of other courses of fire that do not go out to 50 yards um, that you can that you can run if you don't have a 50-yard range. If you have an indoor range, you can run matches as well. We have a, uh, the AP2 reduced target, uh, which can be run uh, indoors, and all the rules for running an indoor match are found in the NRA Action Pistol Rulebook. Does anybody have any questions as of right now? I'll take that as a as a no. So learn about range grants. Excuse me, let me go back to that. Learn about range grants. Some of you are probably wondering, well, we gotta have equipment to run these matches, and if we don't already have the equipment, how do we afford to get the equipment? Um, a great opportunity offered to all of you by the NRA Range Services Division is uh, range, range Grants. You can find more information at these links provided. I do have a link pulled up here that I would like to go over with you guys. Right here, Range Grants. This is the page you want to go to to find information on Range Grants. If you are looking to make your range more safe, either moving dirt, creating more berms, if you if you currently only have one backstop berm and you want to start running NRA action pistol or other action shooting sports, well, you need to have a three-sided uh, shooting bay. So you need to have two more berms put there. So it's going to cost money to get equipment and get in there and move dirt and do all that stuff. So you call up the NRA Range uh, Services Division. You can fill out the application online, um, and you go in and tell them, say, hey, we're looking to run NRA Action Pistol competitions, uh, sanctioned through you guys. We're having a hard time funding uh, target systems right now, so we would like to apply for a grant. I believe the maximum uh, basic range grant is $5,000. Son, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, it's five thousand dollars. That is the maximum that you can apply for, and the the annual due date for applications is, I believe, August August first every year. Okay. And so, what's awesome about this, guys, is you know I'll, I'll go ahead and jump to it uh, right. Well, let's see here. Basically, for five thousand dollars, we're going to get into targets here in a moment, uh, but. 
the options that are out there nowadays as far as target systems, the, the price has gone way down. For $5,000, you can get in, and, and I'll show you here in a little bit as we get to it, you can buy uh, an action target portable moving target system, which means you do not have to have a dedicated range solely set up for an RA action pistol. You can have a portable moving target system, one you can set up when you're done shooting that day, you can tear it down. They retail at $1,499, $1,499. And you have the, the portable falling plate racks, which I believe are retailing at either $11 or $12.99. So essentially you could have a moving target system and three plate racks for that $5,000 grant you get. And then if you're trying to run the four Bianchi Cup courses of fire, that leaves you with the practical event and the barricade event. That's pretty minimal money invested. If you're, if you know, you get target stands for the practical, that's all you need is target stands to set up the, the targets, and the barricade, same thing, target stands, and the, and the money invested there is, is building barricades. If you're at a club that already runs IDPA or USPSA matches, chances are you already have barricades. Uh, the only difference in a Bianchi barricade and a, and a barricade used in IDPA USPSA is that in NRAX pistol, the barricade is secured to the ground because the shooters will use it as a bracing point with their fire, with their hands or their firearms. Open shooters will actually, the open shooters have little wings that come off of the frames of their guns. And they'll actually brace those little metal wings up against the barricade and then lock their fingers around the barrel and lock it to the barricade. So. Um, Really, again, the main difference is the barricades are locked down to the ground, so they're solid, and they're actually a little bit skinnier. It's not a two-by-four on the side of the barricade. It's actually a two-by-two two so that these guys can get their fingers around it. Um, but that's not really a mandatory thing. They can work around that. You don't have to worry about that. It's really specific to the open shooters. If you don't have those barricades, it's not a mandatory uh, additional expenditure and money to, to rebuild barricades. Just use the ones you have. So with $5,000 grant, you can pretty much get just about everything you need as far as target systems to run an NRA action pistol competition sanctioned match at your club. Uh, <clears throat> here on the, the main web page, uh, I'll give you a little screenshot of it there on the side. I believe I have it here for you. Let me bring it over. This is the main NRA Action Pistol web page. This is where you go to find pretty much any information you want on NRA Action Pistol. Um, gives you just a, a, a brief overview of the, of the sport, how to get started. Uh, this will bring you to the Bianchi Cup main page, the National Championship web page. This we will be talking about in a moment, the formal guide on how to run an NRA action pistol competition, rule books, uh, information on the distinguished program. Here is a great uh, tool right here, action pistol competitions by state. If you click on that, you will get a list of every sanctioned NRA action pistol competition listed by state. And it gives you, the, it gives you a link to the club's website, and it gives you the contact information for the match director. So, you're looking for clubs to go check out to see how they run matches or you want to talk to another match director to get a feel for what, what they do and how it is running matches at their club, that's a great way to uh, find some of those people to talk to. Uh, I mean, do you know how long a typical match runs? What's the time frame? Well, you know, son, good question. It depends on, it depends on the amount of people. You know, NRA Action Pistol as it, just the nature of the sport is a slower moving competition than say IDPA, USPSA. The reason for that being higher round count per, per course of fire, so that's already going to make it a little slower, and just the nature of the course of fire. You know, you're, you're shooting static, you're shooting at set dis distances, you know, then you'll You'll shoot your string, you'll move back to another distance, shoot that string, move back to another distance. So it's not like IDP and USPSA where you step up to the line, bing, bang, boom. When you're done shooting, you've shot that whole event. You don't stop till you're done with that stage, and then you're done. NRA Action Pistol 
is a different format and just it's kind of a little bit closer to like a law enforcement or military qualification. You're at set distances, set round count, and you move back and do the same thing over again. So the whole nature of the course of the fire a little bit slower. To, to run 70 people through all course, four courses of the fire, uh, you're looking at, you know, a, a good solid seven, eight hours, you know, on the range. Uh, squat, maybe maybe a little bit less. Squatting starting at say 8:30 a.m. and and ending by 3:30 p.m. You know. Um, what does it cost to set up my range for NRA Action Pistol? Well, I was just starting to get into that a little bit here uh, a second ago. As I mentioned, you have uh, a lot of good choices out there now as far as equipment to use. Action Target Company is our official target sponsor for NRA Action Pistol, so I always recommend them. They're also one of the only ones I know that has a portable moving target system uh, like this one at such a fair price. I do have one of these. Uh, that I have used to set up at some local clubs around here in Northern Virginia. It does run very, very well. It can run off of a generator. Uh, it, has, it comes with a, you have a couple options. You can run it with a battery pack if you're in a remote area and you don't have any power source. You can run it off of a standard 120 volt out of a, a wall, or you can run it off of a generator, um, same, same volt. And it's sturdy, it's, it's solid, it runs at an accurate speed. Once you find the sweet spot, you know, enter the moving target event runs at um, 10 feet per second, at 60 feet in 6 seconds. So, uh, you know, you basically have to use a, a stopwatch and kind of time it and, and find the sweet spot on the little controller. And then what I did is I took a Sharpie marker and just marked where that sweet spot was. So now whenever I reset it up, I know, bing, bang, boom, I set it right there. I always test it again with a timer, but it's been on every time that I've used it since then. Once I take it out of the box, set it back up, get everything going, if I put it to that spot, it goes right back to the right uh, speed setting. So that's good consistency there. Um, I think I may have lost my, my page. Um, on the falling plate rack, but Action Target also sells. Um, now you can see here on this page that Action Target also owns law enforcement targets. It used to be a separate company. It's now owned uh, together. And I believe it's the law enforcement target side of it that has the portable falling plate rack. And those go for, I believe they were either, they're either $11.99 or $12.99 uh, a piece. So, these are really, really fair prices for these kind of target systems. It used to be you couldn't get a moving target system for less than, God, I think about five or $10,000. Um, plate racks used to be, you know, $2,500. So these options are great. They're quality. It's not junk. It's going to last you a long time. Uh, they also, Action Target also makes rimfire falling plate racks. So. Most of our guys running matches also offer a rimfire division to be shot. Uh, the normal plate racks, the plates will not fall uh, when shooting a, a rimfire pistol, so it makes it a lot harder to score. So if you're going to be running a rimfire uh, category, I would suggest also getting rimfire falling plate racks so that they actually fall and it's not a you know a nightmare for your ROs who are doing the scoring on the range. So, Action Target Company is a really good one. Also, it's Secure Firearm Products. Secure Firearm Products. They do not do any moving target systems, but they sell really, really nice uh, plate racks. They have a locking plate rack, uh, which is great because you can have it set on a timer so that at, after that par time, those plate racks lock. So you can't oops, squeeze in and drop one extra plate when you've actually surpassed your, your allotted time. So um, they also make static plate racks, so you don't have to worry about resetting the plates every time. If you're just practicing, you're not really doing it for score, 
or you know, if you're doing one person at a time, then it's easy to keep score that way. It's when you've got multiple people shooting on multiple plate racks and the plates aren't falling and you're trying to count their shots, make sure they're making hits every time, that can be next to impossible. So, um, you know, if you're not running multiple plate racks at a time, you only have the space to run one at a time, well, it may not hurt to look at a static plate rack because it'll be easy to score that way. How do you register matches? So after you've gotten your equipment and, uh, you know, your, your, your setup, and I may have jumped the gun here. I, I think I have my slides maybe out of order. You'll obviously want to look at the match director's manual to help you set up the range. Once you've done that, to, to actually sanction your match, you're going to go to the online registration page, which is found here at this link. This whole slideshow is uh, on the clubs and associations webpage under webinars, so you'll be able to go back and reference this entire uh, presentation and come in and utilize all the links I've provided in here and kind of go back over everything, uh, everything I've talked about, the whole slide presentation, everything. So it, don't don't be too concerned with trying to jot everything down now or uh, you know soak it all in right now. So you'll, you'll go online and register your matches here. It's pretty simple. Um, my contact info is at the very end of this. While you're doing your online registration, if you come into any roadblocks or anything, you can always feel free to just give me a call on my office line and I'll walk you through it. As you see down here, we were talking earlier a little bit about approved registered matches, the differences. Um, it shows you the fee breakdown. Approved match classification fee is 450. Registered registered match, which is also can which also can be state championships, are 550 per shooter for classification fees, and the regional championships are eight dollars per classification fee. And that does mean if you have guys that are signing up to shoot three different guns, be it we have three different divisions, open metallic production. So if you have a guy coming in and he's going to shoot three guns, open metallic production he's going to pay three separate fees because it's three separate classifications for three separate divisions of NRA Action Pistol. So, Jamie, just, just to be clear, uh, the fees that are due, is that $8? Is that just for the like one time just to register the club, or is it every participant has to pay the, that certain fee they want to shoot in the competition? Yeah, no, that is a per-competitor fee. That's an $8 per-competitor classification fee for regional 550 for registered and 450 for an approved match. That is per person, or really, it's per gun. That's why I was making that explanation just earlier. Is that you can have one guy shooting three divisions. He'll come in and literally shoot the entire match three different times with an open, once with an open gun, once with a metallic gun, once with a production gun, and he therefore is going to pay three separate classification fees of $8 if it's a regional or 550 if it's a registered or 450 if it's an approved. So moving on here, give you guys a little idea if you don't know much about NRA Action Pistol. This is the Bianchi AP1 NRA Action Pistol target. It is the official NRA Action Pistol target and the official Bianchi Cup target. Uh, it's shaped like a tombstone as you can see. It has uh, the, the X ring, which equals 10, the 10 ring, which equals, uh, I'm sorry, the X ring equals 10 and an X, the 10 ring equals 10, the 8 ring equals 8, and anything outside of the 8 ring equals 5. If it is not on cardboard, it's a zero. There's no penalty. There's just the, the penalty is you don't get the point. Now, Son, I'm having a hard time easily seeing our questionnaire screen, so please do me a favor and just let me know if anybody jumps in with any questions. Okay, we're good. Thank you, sir. On this page, guys, we also, I just gave a little uh, example of the, of the plates. They're eight-inch circular steel plates. Gives you an idea in relation to the seven-up can there, uh, what size they are. Um, you know, they look, they, they look pretty big, but I promise you from experience, 
you know, not so bad at 10 and 15 yards, but at 20 and 25, those things are pretty small. But it's a lot of fun, and it's challenging to, to try to hit them. All right, so now I mentioned earlier, you know, the uh, official guide match director's manual. Uh, this is a an awesome document to uh, download if you're going to be running matches. It has a ton, 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 ton of information uh, in it on how to run NRA action pistol competitions. I mean, literally, I try to give it to you in layman's terms. Um, here's the match director's guide. Gives you, gives you a little breakdown on, you know, what your just initial range layout, what do you currently have, what you, is ideal to have. Um, you know, I provide you with links to the rule book. The rule book is, is huge. It's got everything you need to know in it. Uh, so you need to definitely download a PDF. We have free PDFs of the rule book online. You can download that and use that as a reference. Is it only downloadable? You can't get it like a hard copy or order it like a rule book, right? It's only downloadable? So, correct. We are no longer printing those in hard copy. So, in the document here, I also give you the what uh, indoor courses of fire are approved. Um, I give you an idea on range staff um, requirements, sanctioning your competition. Here's a little breakdown on the differences between registered, approved matches, differences in approved and registered matches. So you hear scores used for classification, yes, and approved, yes, okay. So this is a great little, um, you know, cheat sheet for the, to explain you the difference in approved and registered matches. Talks about tournament fees, the breakdown there. Awards, you know, what awards are provided by the NRA. Um, processing the national records, you know, you get forms, you get a, a, a packet of paperwork uh, once you've registered your match and you'll have the national record forms in there and, and everything that you need to fill out uh, to return to us is in there. And again, I'm always here to help you, the match director, if you ever have any questions prior to setting up, during the match, after the match, dealing with the paperwork, I am here to help you uh, and make it as easy as possible. I'll give you a breakdown on distinguished points, example, an example of how to dis properly distribute the distinguished points. We had some confusion with that uh, prior. Um, certificate distribution, range materials needed. You know, I try to just give you some, you know, from experience in, in my setting up ranges myself for this discipline as well as others, you know, I try to just think of little things that are useful to have to help you while you're actually physically setting up the range. Um, you know, I'll give you a little bit of information on getting started, submitting the paperwork. You know, I kind of give you an idea of what's in there, what you need to, what you're going to, you know, expect to see. And, you know, I kind of try to just give you a little bit idea of what, what needs to be done. I give you um, SR45 card. You can email me, and I'll send you an Excel spreadsheet for scoring the match. Here's your sponsor. A reporting card, and then here's what I really enjoyed building for people because I, you know, when I set up matches myself, uh, I wish I could have had some stuff like this at, at different times. So I tried to build you guys schematics of the ranges to really give you an idea of what visually you're you're going to be setting up. So, um, you know, I tell you how far apart, six, the target has to be six feet above the ground level and three feet apart edge to edge, you know, so I give you guys all the measurements of how to lay out these courses of fire and then a visual schematic of what it looks like just to give you a rough general idea. I took pictures of the main uh, four courses of fire from the Bianchi Cup uh, so you guys could see them, uh, but I did not do it for every single course of fire because I don't have pictures of all the rest. Moving target. So, you know, this just gives you a great idea of all the different courses of fire that we offer, how to set them up, how to run them, and just gives you an idea of what, 
what we have. Because it's hard. You're looking in a rule book, and you know you're reading courses of fire. A lot of times, it's, it's tough to envision that uh, on the range. So hopefully, this makes it a little bit easier to envision what the what the course of fire actually looks like, and the space needed to run it, and the manpower needed to run it. Just so you know, our Cairo course is kind of sort of like a classifier for IDPA or USPSA. This is kind of like the baseline course of fire to prove proof of proficiency and safety, drawing from a holster, um, or just to kind of give them a general idea of what NRA Action Festival courses of fire are like. Um, that's what the Tyro course is. So yeah, so I got every single approved course of fire is listed in here uh, with a breakdown and, and, and or range schematic. The newest course of fire we just approved is the Texas Mover. I'm hoping in the future to continue adding more dynamic uh, courses of fire like this that involve uh, more reloads. So this is a pretty cool course of fire, Texas Mover. Uh, so it's like the standard moving target event except you do not shoot past the 15-yard line, and you don't stop in between runs of, of the mover. So on the normal moving target event, you'll uh, start right to left. Target comes out. You shoot your six shots. It stops on the left. You reload. You put your hands up again to signal you're good, and it runs from left to right, and you shoot, shoot six shots again for your 12 shots total at 10 yards. Well, in the Texas mover, you start hands up, target moves from right to left, you shoot six shots, it goes behind the barricade on the left, pauses for three seconds, you perform a reload, it runs back across, you perform, uh, you shoot another six shots, pauses for three seconds, you reload. So basically you're shooting 24 shots straight at the 10-yard at the, uh, line with four reloads, and then you're doing the same thing again at 15 yards. So... It's speeding up the course of fire. You're going to run more people through it at one time. It's more dynamic, involves some of the, you know, the more interesting and uh, cool aspects of action shooting that people want to see these days. So I love this course of fire. My, my uh, match director, Alan Strawn, in Bedford, Virginia, uh, runs one of my regionals. He's the one who came up with this. I love it, and uh, I, I'm hoping to continue to to add some more courses of fire kind of like this, more dynamic and more exciting. And you're still using the same equipment. You're not having to do anything different or spend more money to make this happen. So that's always a good thing. So that's the match director's manual. That is huge. If you are serious about running matches, I would strongly suggest downloading that and reading through it thoroughly at least two times. Are there um, courses of fire that are easier or harder than, than each other? Like, is there a course of fire that's for the novice shooter and then one that's for the more an expert shooter? Not, or that's it's all roughly the same? Good question. Not not really. The, 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 they're all pretty difficult. The, the Tyro course is probably the easiest of them. It's just the most basic, straightforward, just to kind of run you through the motions of, of what you're going to have to do in NRA Action Pistol courses of fire. Um, the rest, I mean, you know, none of them are overly complicated. I mean, it's all it's all very straightforward. The whole nature of the discipline is difficult. It is an accuracy-driven sport. It's not like USPSA and IDPA where you can, you know, you can you can still come out on top, lacking in accuracy by making up with speed. So, you know, you can't you can't go really, really, really fast and be kind of inaccurate and still win in NRA Action Pistol. You're either accurate or you're not. You know, accuracy is what wins the game. You have set par times, so unlike IDPA and USPSA, you don't have just an unlimited amount of time and you shoot it as fast as you can. You have a set amount of time called par time or limited vickers. You have a set amount of time to shoot your shots in and that's it. Any shots beyond that are, are penalized. Um, so that's, that's basically the main difference. It, it's, an, it's overall a more difficult action pistol sport than the others, 
in the specifically in accuracy. And these, this is open to people of all ages, correct? Or is it more more for adults? No, I mean NRA Action Pistol is open to. Uh, I think our official age limit is 14 years old. Uh, you know that can. There are exceptions to that. If you have someone under 14 who is classified in IDPA or USPSA, uh, you know, showing proof of that, bringing their classification card and showing us that uh, proof of safety, um, then we make exceptions for that. We will allow you to shoot under the age of 14 if you hold a classification, a valid classification card from one of the other major uh, action pistol um, organizations out there. Here's my info, guys. We're not we're not uh, we're not totally done yet. I want to touch back on a couple other things, but I want you guys to, to see uh, all my info here. I'm here at, uh, Monday through Friday, unless I'm traveling, um, in which case you should get an auto reply, unless I forgot to set it. But uh, always here to help you guys. Any questions? Anything at all it is not a, is not a silly question. Um, you know, I'm hoping that you guys signed up uh, to, to this webinar because you are somebody who already runs other matches at a club or is somebody that works at a, at a raise or club and is interested in starting to hold matches. Uh, I'm here to answer your questions. I'd like to... Um, Go over a little bit more the uh, main NRA Action Pistol web page here. Like I said, you can click the link for Action Pistol competitions by state, and it gives you the breakdown here of all my matches by state, the link to their club if they have a web page. If they don't, I think I just put that they don't, like Dawn, Sportman, Dawn Sportsman's Club does not have one. Um, and then also over here, the contact name for the match director. Okay. The formal guide is here. Uh, the rule book right here brings you the link to, you can get, go to this link and it brings you to, you can get any and all of the rule books uh, for any of the NRA Action Pistol Disciplines uh, at that link. Uh, this is another great thing for if you run your first run your first match and you got some new shooters there that have never shot it before. You can print out a bunch of these and put them out, or you can send them out as a, a link to an email when you're you know inviting all your your you're confirming your 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 competitors. You can say, hey, here if you've never shot before, check this out. Um, it's just kind of an introduction to NRA Action Pistol tells you a little bit about the sport, the approved courses of fire, uh, you know, where to download the rule book, gives you a down, uh, the down low on equipment, a rundown on equipment, uh, the different divisions and what the differences are in those divisions, uh, give you links to where to buy the gear, uh, where to, you know, where to buy all the, the proper gear, the firearms. Uh, these are all major players in the Yankee Cup and NRA Action Pistol. Uh, ammunition requirements, the, the, the power factor, uh, information like that, you know, gives you the breakdown and info on targets, classifications, uh, that, you know, here's your percentages down here to give you an idea of, um, you know, so this is a percentage based on a perfect score, okay? Gives you some info on the rimfire I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, you could run a rimfire only match if you wanted to. If you wanted to run a run a junior rimfire championship, you know, I'd love to see that happen. Um, there's, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities here. Uh, you know, and then just some additional information to get in touch with me and um, other other good info. Uh, here's a little video. This is uh, 
Actually, let's go back to the to the slideshow because I think I neglected to um, show you guys a video. I'll tell you what. Let's just go. Let's watch this video here. This is the Bianchi Cup uh, promotional video. So this gives you an idea. You'll see some of the courses of fire and um, just get an idea of how these courses are, are, are run. You typically have guys uh, lined up together on the same line shooting, kind of like I said earlier, like law enforcement or military qualification. Uh, you'll have three, four guys on line at once, and you can run them all at the same time. The moving target event you just saw there is the only event uh, you're running one person at a time. That's the practical event there. That's the falling plate event. That's the Colt Speed event. These were collegiate uh, shooters. We had the Midway USA uh, scholarship program. It was pretty, uh, pretty neat to have. Again, the practical event. There's the B.A. Cup. Action target. That just gives you guys a little idea of uh, what the, act, the national championship for this sport um, entails. I wanted to uh, get back up here really quick to show you guys my... Uh... Here we go. So this is a great example of a club I have. In Louisiana, they run one of my regional championships in Louisiana. And I'm not sure why I'm not able to maximize this right now. I hope you guys can see this. I apologize. I'm not sure why this is not letting me expand. But this is the barricade uh, range. As you can see here, these are actually steel frames that go up around the barricade and are set in the ground. So these barricades are very solid. Uh, he's a production shooter, so his gun is not allowed to touch the barricade, but his hand is. So his knuckles are probably putting some pressure up against there. Uh, I mentioned earlier the open shooters will put the little wings of their of their guns that come off the frame right here on the barricade and lock their finger around the barrel so that the gun is locked to that barricade. So that's the barricade event. Here he's moving on to a different distance of the barricade. Okay, next falling plate event. Here's the practical event. Now, what I really like about uh, what George Mowbray has done down here in Louisiana is he's, he's, used, he's, he's had a very wise use of space. So basically you see this is his barricade range, but it's also his practical range. So he's running the practical event in between his barricade. So it appears he's got one, two, three lines for practical. So he's running three guys at a time on the practical and he's running four guys at a time on the barricade. So on one range, he's got two of the courses of fire permanently set up. And the way the target systems or the targets are is practical is three feet apart edge to edge, barricade is six feet apart edge to edge. So he just did the math with the measurements, 
and was able to set up his range so he's got the barricade and the practical on the same range with all the correct measurements. Really, really wise use of space and uh, pretty neat idea. Here's the moving target event. As you can see, like I said earlier, 60 feet in 6 seconds. So that gives you an idea of the, of the four Bianchi courses of fire set up at a club. Um, you could set this up with that PT Runner 120, that portable moving target system. Put up a couple pieces of plywood to hide the um, the target. You know, you put at the edge of the tar the edge of the plywood is at you know in a uh, total distance of 60 feet apart. So that way, it's you know your target's only exposed for 60 feet. You set up that portable moving target system behind them. You can literally set it up and break it all down every day whenever you use it. Doesn't have to be permanent. This one is a permanent range here. You, this does not get taken down. It's up year round. Another great thing about having a moving target system is military or uh, law enforcement qualifications. You know, you can maybe get some contracts with some local law enforcement to come in and do their quals at your range. Uh, using your mover and using your plate racks and uh, using your target systems in your range. So, you know, keep that in mind. When you invest, when you get this $5,000 grant from the NRA ranges clubs, and you buy these target systems, not only will you be running NRA action pistol competitions, you can also solicit business and use this to, to make your club money. So there's a lot of other options once you get these target systems. You can also use them for USPSA and IDPA if you already run those. So keep all of that in mind. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. I don't really have uh, too much left for you. I'm hoping you guys have some specific questions uh, that may help you to get started. All right. Thanks, Damian. That concludes today's webinar. Uh, Damian's contact information is up there on the screen, his phone number and his email address. So feel free to jot that down and contact him um, with any questions that you have. We'll, we'll stick around for a few minutes for anybody who has any questions or anything that you want Damien or myself to elaborate on. Go, please check out the clubs and associations website for future webinars and to look at this past webinar. We'll be posting this webinar online on our website shortly, but all of last year's webinars are also on there too. The website is clubs.nra Dot org. I'll repeat that one more time, clubs.nra.org. We'll stick around for a few minutes if anybody has any questions. Please, please, guys, any, any questions are good questions. And here's a question for, for some of you who are still on. Uh, are there are there any of you that have shot an NRA action pistol yourselves? And if you have, what clubs have you shot at? We actually did receive a question, Damien. Um, one person asked if they can get a copy of your presentation with the slide. So if you can send that to me, your your, your copy of your PowerPoint presentation. I can send it out to anyone who would like a copy, a copy of this so they have the information with them also. Absolutely. And they can also they can also email me and ask for it and I'll send it and I'll send it to them. Yes, if anyone would like a copy of Damien's presentation here to bring back to their club, feel free to jot down his information right now and he will email these slides to you. Yep. 
There's my email there, dorsinger at nrahq.org. Shoot me an email, and I will happily give you whatever you'd like. Okay, that looks like that's all the questions that we have for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll be around, so feel free to email us with any questions that you like, or if you have any suggestions for other webinars that you'd like to see. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, Damien. Thank you, son. Thank you, everybody, for coming on.